You've no doubt heard the term the birth lottery. I'm unsure where it comes from, and frankly I don't care. It may have come from the famous Cecil Rhodes quote, remember that you are an Englishman and have consequently won first prize in the lottery of life. Regardless, it is bandied about nowadays by leftists of all stripes, but predominantly by communists, Marxists and other anti-capitalists as a negative way to describe the circumstances of one's birth. The term is seen by those who employ it as a searing indictment of modern Western liberal democracies by asserting that having been born with any degree of advantage, from biological genetic benefits to wealth and prosperity, even the location of one's birth is inherently unfair. I am today going to disabuse you of that notion if you are currently so inclined. First, I will attempt to steel man their position in order to attack it properly. Premise number one. There are circumstances beyond our control that occur prior to our birth. Premise number two. These different circumstances affect our lives in various ways which can be both positive and negative. Conclusion. Because we cannot control the circumstances of our birth, some people will inevitably have more beneficial circumstances and some more negative. This is therefore unfair. The problem here really boils down to this idea that it's unfair to be born better off than someone else, either by having wealthier parents, or being born in a more prosperous nation, or having a genetic advantage like a higher maximum height, or better cheekbones, etc. So, why is that unfair? As far as I can tell, the reason this is believed to be unfair is because of two incorrect assumptions. One being tabula rasa, the assumption that we are all blank slates capable of being moulded into any conceivable outcome, and the lottery concept, that you could just as easily have been born in a vastly different, potentially significantly better or worse circumstance. The reason these two assumptions are false are as follows. We are not blank slates. We cannot be anything. I will never be short, or female, or black. It's not possible. Why isn't it possible? It's just not. Why not, you stupid bastard? Number two, we are not just as likely to have been born in any other given circumstances. You are, and can only have been, born to your parents at that particular time in that particular place. Once you understand this specific point, the entire argument falls apart. There was no, literally zero, percent chance of me being born to a different mother or father. I am the inevitable result of a particular union of two specific people genetically arranged in a unique way and a different combination of people, or time, or location, etc., would inevitably have resulted in a completely different person. I have siblings, all of whom are vastly different to myself, and there are many strangers with different parents, none of whom are me. This may seem an obvious truism, but it needs to be stated. I could not have been born otherwise. I am the result of very specific inputs that cannot be replicated, and neither can you. There was no chance involved, no lottery, no potential for me to have been born in another body. This is the only one I get, and it's the only one I could have gotten. Once you realize that chance is not the determining factor in the circumstances of your birth, the equation changes dramatically. It is no longer random chance dealt me this hand, other people have a different hand, therefore it is unfair. It is now my parents dealt me this hand. Other people have different parents, Therefore, my circumstances differ to theirs. The question is now, why do they differ, and is that unfair? It's still true that you didn't decide the circumstances of your birth. Someone did, though. Many someones, in fact. In fact, in complete actuality, everyone. Everyone decided the circumstances of your birth. Everyone who came before. The circumstances of one's birth are a fact brought about by many conscious and unconscious decisions of successive generations. The actions, inactions, and interactions of many millions of individuals which have led to us becoming a reality. The circumstances of your birth, therefore, must be determined to have been fair or unfair only by determining if those decisions and indecisions of your forebears were themselves fair. We must, therefore, define fairness. I believe that a sensible definition for the purposes of this discussion would be as follows. An action or inaction is fair, provided all parties involved consent and are capable of consent, and such action does not infringe upon any individual's rights to life, liberty, and property. 
It is by this definition that we can quite rightly and justly observe that the vast majority of the present human population exists as the lawful union of two persons without such infringement, and that here in the West the people are, by and large, burdened not with the guilt of having acquired their lives and livelihood through illicit means, but rather are more humbly the true working-class stock who owe their lives to one another, to their hard work, and only those rights which are natural and exist without compulsion and without outside interference. The birth lottery, therefore, properly examined, ought not to be used to assume some unfair cheating at life by ordinary Westerners, but rather could be utilised as a reasonable attack on those who benefit from the immoral predation of their forebears on good people. The sons and daughters of violent criminals, of gangs of thugs, of petty dictators, mass murderers, and other such villains, these are those who have received unjustly the fruits of their unfair action and benefit by nature of birth from immoral and unjust decisions. Those are the true lottery winners, so to speak. As with all injustice, it falls to us to find some way of achieving re-justice and to address this imbalance. There is, of course, another factor that must be brought up. As we are the inevitable end result of the choices of our ancestors, so too will our children and our children's children be the result of our choices. We have a responsibility, therefore, to provide for our children the best possible start in life and to ensure that they have a better start than we ourselves did. It is perhaps this responsibility that leftists despise most of all, but rest assured, you are responsible. Not for the circumstances of your birth, which after all you could not control, but for what you do with your life and the circumstances of the births of your descendants. Until next time.